Hello again. Here's a couple of shader techniques should you want to burn the edges of something or even just add a bit of distress because we all need that in the large right now. <laughs> Let's begin by adding our pieces, shall we? So we'll start with the ground plane here. And we're just going to make it one meter, one meter and give it lots of segments. And now we'll add a null and we'll call that fall off and we'll give that a little item shape. So a ring pointing down as Z axis Make it a little bit smaller. So this is the null that all the textures and displacements will follow. Bit of housekeeping first. So this ground plane, I can lock that. I don't need to select that. I'm gonna close the scene editor. Now layout wise, I'm gonna go for the three stacked to the left, which is uh, that one. Now I don't need to see all this stuff here. So option F2 will hide all of that. It's also there in the preferences. And the reason for that is I'm going to give myself plenty of space to see what I'm doing in the surface editor. This right angle, I'm going to give that perspective. So they've got three perspective views here. I'm going to turn off global illumination. And I'm also going to turn off the environment. I'm going to delete the environment light because I have nothing but trouble with it when I'm reloading scenes. Instead, I'm going to add a ambient light and turn the uh, percentage up on that. And finally, I'm going to turn off the adaptive sampling on the camera just to speed our VPR up a bit. Recently, I found having a custom buffer is very useful. Now, what would be great would be if I could right mouse click on this and there would be some sort of create custom buffer. But you can't do it from here as far as I can tell. So instead, we're going to have to open up the render properties, go over to buffers, edit, create custom buffer. Let's just call this test. Okay to that and close it. Now if we click over here, here's our little custom buffer ready to play with. This burning edges technique is basically a shader. So I'm gonna turn on VPR here and this is our final render. And I'm also gonna turn on VPR on this window here and I'm gonna use the custom buffer to see what's going on. And right now, because there's nothing plugged into it, nothing is going on. So now I can move stuff around in this window. So sorry if that was a little bit tedious, but we are now ready to go. First thing we're gonna go for is an item info and we're gonna point it at that null. So item fall off, which is this null here. I'm gonna go for a native fall off here, native to 2019 plus, I think. Might have been 2018, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, fall off. And we wanna go for the axis version here. I'm gonna take the position into our fall off axis, into the base position. Axis, if we double click on this, is set to vector, that's fine. That's basically which way this is pointing. In fact, I'm gonna turn off the pitch and bank. So we're just left with the heading. So this is our forward vector. So we're gonna take the forward into that axis there. To see what that's doing, let's take the fall off into our test buffer. And that gives us this, which nicely follows where the null is going. Now, if we wanna tighten this up, which I may do a little bit, we'll go for a constant scalar. And we'll plug that into the range. Now, if we take this down to 0.5 or something like 0.3, you can see exactly what that's doing. It won't really affect us right now, but what I'm also going to do as a precaution is take the object position or object spot, as it used to be called, and plug that into the point position. So that kind of sticks to the object now. The next thing I want to do is disturb this line here. Now there's lots of ways we could do this, and I'm going to show you two. In fact, I'm going to start off with the more complicated. So we're going to get a gradient. I'm going to take the fall off into the input and then the color into the test. I'm dealing with values between zero and one, so I'm going to put a key at one position and make that white. So now effectively we've got exactly as we did before we went into the gradient. But what I'm going to do here is on this first position is show key inputs. I'm going to do exactly the same for this white key. I'm going to go for a procedural texture. 
So the beauty of this technique is I can use one texture to disturb this edge and I can use an entirely different texture to disturb this edge. Let me show you what I mean. So if I take the value into position, let's say I'm happy with that. Let's take another procedural and plug it into the white edge. Nothing much is happening because it's exactly the same texture. Let's give it something entirely different. The only thing to be careful of is that these values here in this texture, zero to one, don't overlap with these values here. So if we do something like 0.5 in there, 0.4 possibly. So playing around with the textures, I have two different textures here trying not to overlap the values here. Sometimes it gives a nice overlap. It's really down to experimentation, but that's already giving us quite a nice effect there. Now, just as an aside, this actually makes for quite a nice landscape technique. So if I take the color into the displacement, select the ground plane and bring up its properties, click on surface displacement, let's add a value in there, 0.5. It's weird that sometimes this updates and sometimes it doesn't. Let's turn on Studio Live quickly just so it does. So if we move this around, perhaps we increase the range as well so we can play around with the width of all of this. You get some really nice landscape results. But as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna use a slightly different technique and if anything, slightly easier. So let's reset all this back to as it was. Let's get an add. Now we want a vector flavor of that. I'm gonna add the object position with this procedural's color output. I'm just gonna use this texture to disturb again that line. Okay, so we don't need full on 100%. We just need to play around with the textures there. Perhaps a little bit of additional contrast might help us. Actually, the contrast doesn't work at all. <laughs> so let's take that off. We can also play around with the, the fall off there. So that might be quite interesting. So this edge will be our burning and this texture would be like the paper getting hotter. So basically we have everything in place to get this to work. We're just gonna take this value here. We're just gonna clamp it and remap it and invert it and who knows what just to get what we need for our burning edges. We'll begin super simple. We'll go for a mixer. Now the foreground color is our paper. So plug in your image or whatever it is you've got in there. Let's make it a blue. We'll take the fall off into the opacity and then the color into the shaders color. Now we could tighten this black and white value up here with the gradient or some other technique, uh, but for now, this is good. Clipping is next, which as we all know is either on or it's off. And we want it to be on on this trailing black edge here. So we need to isolate the black and the white. So let's get a logic node. We'll take the fall off into there and we'll see what that looks like in our test. It's clearly working, but it's doing so on the wrong edge. We'll open up the logic node and what we want it to say is where A is black and B is black, which is this side here, or B is zero, then this is where we want our clipping. So let's close that and plug that into the clip. And it's disappeared because we're clipping the buffer. So if actually we add in an environment like, like I deleted earlier, <laughs> we will see is taking our trailing edge and clipping it accordingly. So that's very good. Let's delete that light. Finally, we want our illuminated edge. So let's take this and we'll put it into a gradient and plug that into our test buffer. We'll add another key. Let's make it white. There it is. Now the trick here is to isolate this edge here. 
Now we want to do so, but we don't want a hard edge. We want a little bit of gradient for coloring. So I'm going to take where it says black and I'm going to make that white. I'm going to take this little key and I'm going to make it black. You can see what that gives us. Now there's a nice gradient going on there, but I don't need it that much. So I'm going to take this and crush it right up close to this key here. And this fit all will nicely zoom in on that area for us. So I can make it even tighter. We don't want it this tight because we're going to use this value to colorize our edge. So for now, I'm going to take the output of that gradient. I'm going to plug it into the luminous input of our principal shader. Now we can see up here, this is our final render. You can see what that's done. So we're going to deal with the colors next. So I'm going to take another gradient to collapse that down for a bit of tidiness. I'm going to take the color from the luminous value as the input to this gradient here. I'm going to plug the color from that gradient into the luminous color. There we go. Okay, I hope that's clearer there. So these are black and white values, which makes life a little bit easier. Where it's white, this end, let's make it a bright yellow. And then we're gonna add another key and we're gonna crush it right up to the top there. We're gonna make this sort of like a cooler orange. Obviously, I'm no technical expert on what the color should be. So you can experiment with that. But there we go. And we can bring up these blacks here. Bring a nice glowy edge. We could also take this yellow value and we could pump up the alpha. So it's a little bit hotter. Perhaps make this one linear so there's no transparency. Okay, so that's looking good, but it is a little bit uniform at this point. It does change a little bit on these edges, which is really nice. But we definitely need a little bit more detail in there. We will grab a turbulence texture this time. We're going to use this turbulence to break up this luminosity. So if we have a look at that, see what the texture is doing. We're going to make this really small. Perhaps we can bring up the contrast on this one. Perhaps a little bit more detail in the actual texture will help us out. So this, all this little stuff, that's quite nice. So let's get a multiply. Just a scalar will do for this. I'm going to take the gradient of the luminosity value and we're going to multiply that with that turbulence. So that will give us this little detail here. This is a good reference to hone in on that texture. This will depend a lot on how far away you are from your burn as well. But let's say we're happy with that for the moment. I'm going to take the result from these two and we're going to plug that into our luminous color. Now I've got a feeling, let's have a look at that on its own. I've got a feeling there's not enough contrast and that's probably because I need to turn that up. There we go. So the devil's in the detail, definitely with this particular part. Perhaps we need to extend the fall off a little bit. Another thing we can do as well for this turbulence texture, I think it would probably benefit from a little animation. On a position, let's press the envelope button and we'll add, we'll add a bit of movement doesn't need to be too much. Post behavior set to linear, so if it goes into infinity. If we scrub the timeline a little bit, you can see it's going quite frantically. If we look at the actual texture scale, I'm only at one centimeter on the Y there. So if I make it a bit larger, that should calm that down quite a bit. So there's some experimentation there as well. So you could either tweak this bit in your scale or your keyframe choice is yours. Final step, we touched on it earlier, but let's add a bit of displacement. 
We don't need a huge displacement, we just want it at this point here, really, don't we? So we can take this gradient from the luminosity channel. Let's take the fall off into that and see what we have so far into the test. Perhaps we could extend that slightly. There we go. Now, if you remember earlier, I added the surface displacement. This is set at 10 centimeters. So let's take this into the displacement and see what happens. Let's turn on the uh, studio live again. It's not quite what I'm after. We're not burning down the VizRT offices. <laughs> okay, so it's an easy tweak. Let's open that gradient and where it is, what is it? And where that trailing edge is, which is white, I believe. Let's just take down the color value. There we go. Cool, so I think our initial setup is complete. And now it all remains is for tweaking. And what I could do, so taking the scale into the scale, I could use this, these levers. Now I've noticed when it gets to a certain angle, I do get like a dead spot here. I'm not sure why that is. If somebody uh, knows the answer to that, please let me know. But there we go. That's our burning effect. And we can go at any point and change our texture. Quick note on the buffers, here's an example of the intro. Basically all I did was render out an RGB pass which contains the RGB and the alpha and also the luminosity channel. So the nice thing about this is I know it's all at 0, 0, 0 axis. So I selected the camera and went to the in out tab, center AE. So that gave me my camera. I bought in the separate elements. So I've got the flame element. So I have the RGBA render here. And then on top of that, I have the luminance. And that's basically just added on top along with glow, universe's glow in this case. And because the camera details in there, it's easy to add a background. Now for that black burn mark, I just took the first frame of the render. There it is, nothing special there. And slept on a bit of color grading on top. That's it for this one. I hope it was of use to somebody. Oh, my God.